The very DNA of civilization is encoded in the poet's song, the painter's paintbrush, and the vibrant dialogue about ideas. Welcome to The Power of Print, M01, Introduction to Mass Comm. This is lecture one of three. So print culture, before books or writing in general, oral cultures passed on information and values through the wisdom and memories of a community's elders or tribal storytellers. Print culture and the book gave future generations different and more of, often more enduring records of authors' work. So some 5,000 years ago, the ancient Egyptians and Babylonians began experimenting with alphabets, finding a way to preserve symbols to record these oral traditions. The first alphabets marked the development stage of books. At first, picture-like symbols and letters were drawn on wood strips and or pressed with stylus into clay tablets, then tied or stacked together to form the first books. As early as 2400 BC, the Egyptians wrote on papyrus. This is where the word paper comes from. So papyrus is made from plant reeds found along the Nile River that they rolled into scrolls, similar to what builders use, uh, builders do with blueprints. This process was then adopted by the Greeks in 650 BC and the Romans in 300 and uh, 300 BC until gradual, gradually parchment, which is treated animal skin, replaced the papyrus in Europe. Parchment was stronger, smoother, more durable, and less expensive as they didn't have to be imported from Egypt. Around 1000 BC, the Chinese began to create book-like strips, um, book-like records on strips of wood and bamboo tied together in bundles. By 105 AD, the Chinese began making paper from cotton and linen, but it would not replace parchment in Europe until the late 13th century. The first book was repro reproduced in was produced in the fourth century by the Romans, and it was called the Codex. Uh, this includes sheets of parchment uh, sewn together along the edge and bound with piece thin pieces of wood and covered with leather. The major difference with the scroll style and the Codex was that the scrolls had to be wound and un unwound, whereas the Codex could be open to any page. So during the Middle Ages, which is like four hundred to fifteen hundred BC, the Christian clergy influenced what is now known as the manuscript script culture. This was a period in which books were painstakingly lettered, decorated, and bound by hand. Uh, this stage also marks the entrepreneurial stage in the evolution of books. So priests and monks advanced the art of bookmaking by becoming the earliest editors. They were known as scribes, and they transcribed most of the existing philosophical tracts and religious texts of this period, especially the Bible. Through tedious and painstakingly work, painstaking work, scribes began became the chief caretakers of recorded history and culture, promoting ideas they favored and censoring ideas that were out of line with contemporary Christian thought. Many books from the Middle Ages were illuminated manuscripts. So these were made for churches or wealthy clients and fe featured decorative, colorful um, designs and illustrations on each page. Their covers were often made from le leather and some were embedded with precious gems or trimmed with gold or silver. During this period, scribes also developed rules of punctuation. So this is huge. They made distinctions between small and capital letters and started placing spaces between words to make re reading easier. Older Roman uh, writing actually used all capital letters and the words were in together on a paid page, making it a tedious experience to read. You can find hundreds of illuminated manuscripts today in rare book collections of museums and libraries. So to quickly review, scribes in the Middle Ages helped to develop advances in the written language and design of books. However, their advancements did not include the mass prolifer proliferation of books, specifically because each manuscript had to be uh, created one copy at a time. So in the 3rd century, the Chinese printers developed block printing, and this was a technique in which sheets of paper were applied to blocks of ink and with raised surfaces depicting hand-carved letters or illustrations. And this technique helped to launch the basic idea of newspapers, magazines, and books throughout much of modern history. One drawback, though, was that hand-carving each block or page was time-consuming, but the process still enabled multiple copies to be printed and bound together. The oldest dated printed book has seven pages, and it's rolled like a scroll. Uh, this is from China in 858 A.D., so when Marco Polo went there in 1295, he came back from China and introduced the block printing uh, system to Europe. And he introduced it at roughly the 15th century. And then he helped this, this entire invention helped launch the literate middle class. So the next invention was the development of a movable type 
the movable type, which eventually started its development in China. Uh, this was featured individual characters made from reusable pieces of wood or metal rather than entirely hand-carved pages. So this sped up the time it took to create block pages. This process, also used in 13th century Korea, helped develop, um, developed independently actually in Europe in the 15th century. So now we have the Gutenberg Re uh, Revolution and the printing press. The next leap forward um, in printing took place in Germany from 1453 to 1456 with Johannes Gutenberg. Using the blueprints from the wine press, Gutenberg applied the idea of movable type to develop a mechanical printing press. His then staff of printers went on to produce the first modern books, which included 200 copies of the Latin Bible. Uh, 21, which are still around today, are now known as the Gutenberg Bible. Each of these Bibles requires six presses, several printers, and months to produce. It was printed on calf skin based parchment and vellum. Vellum. These pages were hand decorated and use and the use of woodcuts made illustrations possible. Gutenberg also found a way to not only make books a mass medium, but he also formed the prototype prototype for all mass production. So Chaucer's Canterbury Tales became the first English work to be printed in the book form in the late 15th and 16th centuries, and majority of the printed books were um, elaborate, decorative, and large. So this left purchasing to mainly aristocrats, royal families, religious leaders, and ruling po politicians. Eventually, printers were able to reduce the size of books and found less expensive, uh, expensive material, uh, allowing book purchase for more than just the upper class. So, as access to information uh, beyond our inner circle, uh, social and cultural transformation took place as the spread of printing presses and books increased. Historian Elizabeth Einstein said when people can learn for themselves by using maps, dictionaries, Bibles, and the writing of others, they could differentiate themselves as individuals and their social identities were no longer solely dependent on what their leaders told them or the habits of their families, communities, or social class. This entire process of creating mass distributed books allowed for people that didn't have access to religious works, such as the Bible for the lower class, or such as textbooks uh, for the lower class. This uh, created um, uh, an illiterate uh, class system.